What is this, buddy? What did you get in the mail? Can you open it? What is it? Oh my gosh, he is so excited. I'm excited too. We've been waiting for this, haven't we? Do you want me to open it for you? Do you want me to open it? Can we roll the intro first? Are you looking for the intro over there? That's not over there. Do you want to open it? Okay, let's open it. I know it says no sharp objects, but I was very careful. Whoa. What is it? Is this for you? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What is all this? Inspect it. Make sure we got all the parts. Whoa, stickers. Look, we got some stickers. All right. Got one package open. Let's open the next one. Careful. What's in here? Oh, be careful. Honey, that's not yours. That's not yours. All right, I'm gonna put this one open. Oh, what is this? Whoa. Okay, so this is just the light. Oh, but I think they got more stickers. More stickers! Do you want me to put a sticker on you? Okay, so we've got the light in here. And we've gotta get this tent set up. So, I'll do that later. Okay, so as you can see here, and you obviously already knew because of the title of this video, um, we have a tent. And I'm really excited about this. Um, one of my favorite plant YouTubers is James Armstrong. Pudge, tell James how much we love him. Say we watch your videos all the time. How about you watch Pudge while I do this? Can you sit? Okay, I'll give you your belly rubs. So one of my favorite YouTubers is James Armstrong and he grows his um, a lot of his aeroids inside of the Mars Hydro Grow Tent. Um, I was particularly intrigued by his philodendron glorious and his philodendron majestic they have grown tremendously over like what i consider to be a short period of time and of course more than just like the tent goes into um growing it that large but i do think the tent played a big role so i wanted to try it we wanted to try it, right? So I started off with the smallest tent mostly because I am very limited in space inside of an apartment, but um, I do have some imports coming today, which is why we are scrambling to do this before Mother's Day lunch, um, even though they're gonna be watching this in like a week or two. So I'm just gonna get this up quickly. I'm going to go do Mother's Day stuff, go pick up the imports, and then I will um, check back in with you guys later and kind of just show you how I fill it up but it's going to be a journey with this because I do want to sort of rig it in a way that um, can maximize the space because I'm going to be helping a friend import import <laughs> acclimate some imports over the next few weeks or months I don't know how long um, but yeah that's the plan for today what do you think did I miss anything should we just get it set up now because we've got to go soon? Yeah. Can we give um, a high five? High five? Yay! Okay, let's start.
because you took a bath, huh? You, you took a bath. Mm -hmm. I love you. I got the frame up and listen, the instructions are very straightforward, but I am blaming my lack of comprehension um, on the fact that I'm wearing a bra and I don't wear bras. I'm wearing the bra for YouTube. Second, I haven't had any caffeine. Three, I need to take my, my pills, my birth control. And four, I'm very hungry. Okay, so place the tent horizontally. Done. Got it. Cover the tent frame with tent cloth. Okay. This is going to get dog hair all over it, but you know, that's just, that's just the way. This is so cool. video gets like a million dislikes, I get it. In fact, I'm gonna dislike this video. Take that! My camera's overheating. Peekaboo! Hi! Do you like the tent? Where are my plants gonna go? Oh, okay. Well, I guess we can ask for another one. You wanna ask him for another one? I don't think they're gonna give one to us, buddy. Okay, can you get out so that I can show them? All right, so this is the tent and I didn't even tell you the size. It's the smallest size they have, which is actually a great size, especially if you're in an apartment or you're just limited for space. I, yeah, I think this is perfect. If I were to go bigger, I would maybe get the one that's just slightly taller, but I'm smitten. This is where the lights are gonna go. They're gonna hang off these two bars. I've sealed off all of the the vent holes since I'm not growing marijuana. Um, down here are some uh, air vents 
and I'll probably keep one open. I do think I'm gonna run a very small humidifier in here. I might even bring my Atmo fix in here. I'm not 100% sure. I think that the humidifier I had in mind might be a little bit too intense for a tent this size. Um, I do wanna get a fan. I think what I'm gonna do is open up one of these holes and then I'm gonna put a fan in here so that there's like some air circulation going inside of it. But yeah, I'm, I'm actually so stoked. I tried to film setting all of this up, but the angle was just too weird and it's super dark in my plant room. Sorry, Pudge is like, Pudge just got back from his little walk and <laughs> he's exhausted. So it came with this little um, piece of metal and I just used clips to clip it directly onto the grow light and it's hanging off of this bar so it's quite secure. Um, I fished the cord up through this top vent hole and then I just sealed it shut and, and yeah, it was like super simple. Okay, I am home now and I've picked up the import. I just wanna show you guys this one. Oh my gosh. This is some kind of hybrid and I don't know what it is but I love it. It's a beaut. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. I'm gonna be showing you the plants that I'm gonna be importing over the next few weeks or months, however long it takes. The first one that we have here is um, an Epipremnum pinnatum, Albo variegata. And this is a pretty massive one. And you can see it already has the fenestrations. Sorry, you're gonna have to excuse Pudge. And look at these aerial roots. Like, it's kind of nasty, to be honest. Like, I'm not a huge fan of the way that looks, but it's pretty crazy. Like, that's how it would, you know, latch on and grow in the wild. So, yeah. There's that one. I've actually got a few here. This is a Philodendron Melanochrysum, mature form. And you can compare it to a more juvenile one. So they can really beef up if you let them. And it's got a new leaf coming. So there's that. There's this one. Some of the leaves are going, and hopefully they can be acclimated sooner than later, meaning getting some nice good roots on them so that they can hold on to these leaves. And this one is so cute. This one is sort of like in the middle of those two. So this is like medium size, I guess. This is a, looks like a crystal mag. And then I have, <laughs> I've got an entire bucket here of Epipremnum pinnatum, Albo variegata. Some of them have really nice variegation. Some of them are kind of green, but like you can see these ones are pretty nicely variegated and they are just humongous. They are massive. I don't think I've ever seen one this size in real life. This one is a silver anthurium silver blush or something. We're not really good with the hybrid names. There's so many. But yeah, this one's really, really silvery. So cute. I used to have one. I don't know why I sold it. Sorry, it's like all boobs. All fake boobs, by the way, because I'm wearing a bra. What do we have here? Oh, this is nice. I think this is another crystal mag. I just love, I love these, these plants. They're just, they're so easy to keep. This is a really nice hybrid. It's like, a, it's a very long leaf. Interesting. Hmm. 
it's gonna be hard to not want to buy all of these from her. We're gonna try. Got another one of those cute hybrids, those cute silvery hybrids. I don't know how loud the panting is gonna be in the audio, but Pudge is here to stay. Um, another Milano Chrysum. This one's a pretty big one. But this is a mid cut, so the top has been chopped off. So the new, the new uh, growth that's gonna come out of the auxiliary point is probably going to be much smaller than this. Um, but I find with Milano Chrysums, the more mature you propagate from, so like a leaf this big, um, it doesn't, it's not like super, super small. Like I've actually had pretty sizable propagations come from mature Milanos. And then I asked my friends in my group chat, I asked if someone had a mouse pad, like, cause I moved my computer, one of my computers into my plant room and I needed a mouse pad. And my friend Jing was like, oh, I think I have one, but it's like really ugly. She was not lying. Like she pulled out the ugliest mouse pad you could have ever pulled out. And now I'm gonna be using it in my plant room because I'm too cheap to go buy a brand new one. Okay, last box. This one has another mid-cut Milano Chrysum. Man, it's a shame that these tops were chopped off, but yeah, the new growth that's gonna come from these, I think are gonna be really, really nice and a really good size. Um, I just love Milanos. But yeah, you can see some of it is starting to yellow, so that's kind of the process with importing. Typically, your plant is gonna look the best out of the box, usually. Another one of those silvery anthuriums. I'm so excited to fill up the tent because I don't, I surely do not have enough plants to fill it. Oh, these are so, I don't know what this is. Does anybody know what this is? It's got a round petiole. Um, it has very like magnificum looking leaves. It's something and it's really cute. And then the last one of the imports is another one of those silvery ones. They look so cute together, like, when when these get really big, oh my gosh, they are amazing. I'll see if I can plug a photo of one. And then this one is my own, and I can't remember the name of it, but I got it in a purge. It's got, like, plowmanii looking petioles with the ruffles, it even has plowmanii looking leaves, but it's not a plowmanii. And I really like it, it's so cool. And hopefully it likes my house. Okay, so it's looking a little sad in here, but there's a little bit of bad news. I found thrips. <laughs> and thrips didn't come from my house, they came from the plants, they were probably embedded in the soft tissue, and they hatched when I put them in this cozy little tent. Um, so yeah, it's been kind of a rough few days trying to get everything cleaned out and checked and inspected and treated and, um, yeah, it's just, you know, that happens. Uh, plants have pests and they're not supposed to have pests when you import them into the country, but a plant like Thrips, I mean, those guys are like basically indestructible sometimes. So. Right now, we're just kind of in the monitoring phase. I've already treated them once. I have some predatory mites on the way and I'm just gonna release them in here and just kind of let them do all the dirty work. But for now, it's just kind of a waiting game. Not ideal. It's definitely not ideal, but it happens. So this is the Milano that had the most thrips and you can see it's kind of like run its course and the plant is very weak. And yeah, I'm just, I'm kind of hoping I can get some roots on this soon. I can already see some roots starting um, down on that aerial root if it would focus. No? Oh, okay. You guys, do you see that back there? I'm gonna zoom in. Ew, I'm gonna freaking throw up. 
<laughs> I've never seen a mealybug in real life and it's just as horrific as I knew it would be. Um, it's big and fat and white and disgusting and I'm gonna I have to I have to handle this and now I've got to check them all and make and you know what when there's one there's probably ten so <sighs> wish me luck okay before we handle this mealy bug situation look at these roots they look like Naples it looks like an udder like a cow's udder ew I think I hate it it's cool but oh I hate it yuck I've actually never had aerial roots like this before. This tent is bomb. These silver walls, they really do make a difference. It is warm aft in here. It's bright as heck. And yeah, kind of love it already. <gasps> is it moving? Oh no, it's not moving. I'm pretty sure it's dead. Okay, yeah, I forgot what I was doing. So I'm basically taking some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip and I'm just gonna kill it. Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going. I'm going. I'm going. Oh no. No. Is it gonna move? I literally... No! No! Ew. <gasps> Ew, it's moving! I got it and it looks like a booger. I'm gonna throw up. I feel a little bit sick. Not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I've, and I just said this like the other week, I was like, I'm so lucky, I've never had mealybugs before, and here we are. Um, I'm like honestly really scared of this plant now. Oh, there's another one! Oh, I'm scared. I gotta change this water out, this looks like swamp water. Oh my gosh, oh my god, I'm crying, why is there so many? <laughs> No. Focus. It's not like I paid a thousand dollars for this camera or anything. Oh wait, I did. Okay, I guess it just wants me to get really close. It's right there, do you see it? Right there. That's so nasty. I wanna burn this plant, but it's not mine to burn. All right. We are gonna go back in with alcohol, look away if this makes you queasy or if you don't believe in killing pests on plants. Oh my gosh! Okay, honestly, I didn't think that any sort of like plant pest could freak me out, but I am 100% freaked out by mealybugs. Oh my lanta. Oh my lanta. They're like kind of sort of everywhere. And I'm a little bit baffled that I didn't see it when I did my first inspection. And I thought it was pretty thorough too. And those suckers were big. Are those thrips? Hmm. Okay. I'm okay. Everything's fine. Nobody panic. Nobody. Pa I'm not panicking. I'm not panicking. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I am not panicking. If there is one pest in the world, like, would I prefer thrips over mealybugs? Kind of. Like, at least I could literally squish a thrip with my finger. Mealies are like fuzzy and they've got feet and like circumference, a diameter. Ugh, yuck. I literally feel like vomiting. I'm scared to touch this plant. Yeah, I'm gonna give this one like the full sauna spa treatment because I'm not freaking down with that, dude. These roots are freaking disgusting I want them gone from my life I am starting over yeah I can see more on here this is a literal problem so I'm gonna do this off camera because this is actually extremely anxiety inducing and I, I yeah I can't multitask and I'm sure you guys wouldn't care um, that I'm not recording myself like 
going to town on wheelies. So I'll be back. People probably think that I like made him go in the tent and like made him pose for the camera, but I promise you guys, this guy loves this tent. And <laughs> I'm trying to brainstorm a way that I can keep the bottom sort of open, which makes no sense since like you should be filling up this tent with stuff. But I kind of like the idea that he can just like crawl in there and just hang out and get his tan on. So anyway, this is what is happening. Um, if you're wondering about this size, yes, a pug can fit in it and it's just, it's perfect size. So I did get, um, I didn't get, but I started shopping around for shelves to put in here and I just ordered dog food and that was really expensive. So I'm trying to not spend more money. So I took this shelf that was in the closet and now all of my pants and my jeans are on the floor, which is fine, but I'm gonna try to use that in here. And then I also had a grid wall laying around and I got these S hooks from Amazon a long time ago. It came in like a pack of like 50 or something. Um, and then I just hung it from the bar that it came with. And then I actually switched out the light because the Mars Hydro light is actually really strong. Um, and I don't think that it was a great match for this size if I have to like be completely honest and transparent. I think that the light is too strong for the smallest size tent. Um, the walls of this are silver as you can see and the point of that is to like contain heat and to like reflect light and I didn't want the plants to get bleached. I don't know much about cannabis growing but I think that if you're growing cannabis, that light would be fine. But since I'm growing aeroids, I just, I wanna be sort of like on the safer side of things. So I switched it up for this panel, which I think is 40 watts. I'll plug in the specs, cause I don't remember, I have so many lights. Um, and then I hung it the same way. I used those little clips that it came with and these sort of like carabiner rope things. And I just clipped it directly to the top of these. Um, and yeah. I am just going to try and get the shelf set up and then get the plants in and find a way to allow Pudge to still stay in here because honestly it kind of breaks my heart to think that he can't hang out in here anymore considering how much he loves it. Do you love it? <laughs> okay, let's get the plants in. You can't have this. It. It's not for puppies. I am so hungry. Like. I don't really like salad, but if there was a salad in front of me, I would demolish it. That is not for it. It's like, oh, whoa. Careful, buddy. It's pretty tall, but I think it's gonna be fine. Um, how did I do this again? Oh, I wish I had that bottom shelf. Hmm. Kiss, 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 kiss. Oh, I love you. Go inside. Go inside. <laughs> go ahead. Good job. There we go. On a scale of 1 to 10 for stability, I give this about a 3. I, um, I want to hammer it, but my neighbor. One second, okay? You can go back in. Can you go out? This is like another one of those things where I was trying to get the cover on the tent. I think I'm gonna have to assemble it inside of the tent because it's not gonna go in. Just great. Whoa, sorry. Legitimately, I would hate to live under me. I'm, you see, I'm awful. I am 100% awful. <laughs> this is why I need a house with no downstairs neighbors because my downstairs neighbors are lovely and I feel bad that they have to put up 
put up with my crap every day. I vacuum every single day. And I move things around every single I'm just I'm just a bad neighbor. Okay, so I made this grid wall go horizontal instead of vertical, and this shelf is in and it looks really weird, but I think it's gonna work for what I need it for, to be honest. I'm gonna see if I can try and create one more layer here, although I really wanted Pudge to be able to just like hang out in here, but at the same time, just like thinking about it, um, I'm not really gonna have this just like kind of open all the time, just when I'm checking on them, so it doesn't really make sense to like configure the entire thing around <laughs> Pudge being able to just like hang out in there. Uh, but yeah, anyway, that's just my thought process and I'm just gonna keep going. I told myself I'm not gonna get attached to any of these imports because they're gonna to have to be sold by my friend's shop, but this one is just so cute. <laughs> I love it. It's like, it just says like it wants to live with me, but I know it can't, so. Whoever gets this one, you're very lucky. So I am a little bit worried about the distance between these plants and this grow light. I haven't burned any um, plants with this light before, but I also haven't had it this close. So I think what I'm gonna try and do is uh, angle it a bit this way. Hmm. Is it too much now? Once I close this, it's gonna reflect the light back so it's gonna be fine I would much rather do that than have it get burned um, and this is a very much like a temporary situation I will think of something a little bit more like long term but I did need to get these imports in here right away and uh, let me give you a better look it's kind of hard to explain how I've done this I'll try and like get into here and show you um, what it looks like but this is what it looks like from the front um, you can see that I shortened the tie and I just have it hanging on the bar directly and I just kind of like instead of centering this rope onto the bar I kind of pushed it to one end so that it leans backward if that makes sense and if it doesn't make sense I'm really sorry but that's the best I've got <sighs> okay, I am out of breath. Sorry, the cleaners are vacuuming outside. Oh my gosh. Pudge, Pudge, be the bigger person. Um, but other than that, I didn't even show you guys. It's got this little tie here so that you can just keep the door open. There's not like a 
you know, a lock or anything, but I've had the door open for about 10 minutes now, so humidity has dropped quite a bit, but typically it's about 75 to 80% in here, um, and that's pretty high considering there's not that many plants in here. So over the next few weeks, I'm going to be finding a way to maximize the space more, to boost humidity, which will be um, basically just bringing in more leca with water, bringing in more sphagnum moss, and just kind of filling this tent more. I'm trying to convince my friend who owns the shop to bring me more plants today uh, so that I can fill this thing up even more. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much what's going on. I do have some mites coming today and I'm really excited to be able to just like release them in here and go to town. So I will come back, I guess, when those arrive. So the mites have arrived. Do you wanna sniff them out, make sure it's all good? It's okay? Okay. So these are actually a different brand than I'm used to. This is Grow Live uh, Swilive. Grow Live brand and they're the Swilive mites. And typically I use Copper brand, which is, whoa, which is I think the most popular biological pest company here in Canada. But I have seen people use Grow Live brand before, so I'm kind of excited to try it. Um, they call this the Amblyseus sverskii, and it targets four different types of mites, which are the two-spotted spider mites, the russet hemp mites, broad mites, and strawberry mites and then three types of thrips, which are the onion thrips, western flower thrips, and eastern flower thrips. <laughs> and they also get white flies, which I've never had white flies before, but um, I know, babe, I'm almost done. So these guys will target your thrips at the larval stage. It's not going to eat adult thrips. Adult thrips are much bigger than these. And if you've never gone like the biological pest route, um, this is a really good starter one because of how small they are and they're really cute They're not scary at all as they eat more. They do get a bit fatter, but they get they get cuter. So um, You're gonna need to use this in like an enclosed space I know people have used this like sort of in the outdoors and it's been okay but your best chance at really allowing all of them to hatch and um, to do the work you hired them to Temperatures above like 25 Celsius is ideal as well as humidity over 60%. Um, right now it's holding steady at 75, 80% in the tent, which is great. So I'm just gonna get these hung up in there and hopefully in the next few days they all wake up. But unfortunately I'm not gonna be able to show you them in action in this video because what day is it today, Pudge? Yes, it's Thursday. Tomorrow this video comes out and I still have a lot of editing to do. So I think maybe I'll do an update video in like two weeks. And also you can follow me on Instagram because I'll probably show them there. You wanna get them hung up? Are you gonna help me? Okay, let's go put them up. Well, I know your biological mom was really cute because I saw her, but I didn't see your dad. But I bet he was really cute too because you are just adorable. So I'm just going to be hanging some from here. And actually, no, I'm gonna hang them all over the pots first. And I'm gonna hang some back here. Put some on this guy. I wish these would eat mealybugs so that I didn't have to um, handle that problem, but you can't see it in the frame, but I'm gonna get some of these anthuriums that are down here on the floor. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven packets down at the bottom, and then I'm gonna go get some on the top now. You get one. Oh no, you're squished. Sorry, guy. Jing, don't look. Okay, oh. All right, so, got a good amount of 
That sound never gets old. I laugh at it every single time. So I have a couple extra packets here that I'm just gonna use inside of this EXO. And I still haven't got the right panel door fixed so I can't open the right side, which has not been fun, but frankly, paying for a new door is not in the cards for me right now because I'm about to spend way too much money on nose butter for Pudge. Um, the nose butter I want is like $6 and shipping is like $25. And because I desperately need the best kind of nose butter for the best boy, I'm going to pay it. And um, when you watch my video, <laughs> you help me take care of my dog. So thank you. I appreciate you guys. Honestly, I really do appreciate you guys. Um, it's been sort of an adjustment, like going kind of more public on YouTube. Instagram felt like a very safe space for me. And um, I just feel like you're more vulnerable on, on YouTube for like internet bullies. And then, you know, you can thumbs down videos. And just to be completely transparent, it like, it does kind of take a toll and you have to remind yourself like, you're not everyone's gonna like you and agree with you and um, that's fine but yeah I just like appreciate the the support and people that you know even if you don't agree with the way that I do things like you still stick around and you're just really nice and I appreciate that so anyway that's my that's my TED talk for today okay so my camera's overheating but I've got Swilives all in here I'm gonna seal it up and hopefully wake these guys up. Go get your toy. Good job. Good job. Can I have it? Could I have it? Can I have some boba please? I'm very thirsty. Oh, thank you. Are you sharing? <gasps> wow, that was so nice of you. Do you want a treat? All right, let's go get a treat. <laughs> Can you go down? No, no, don't touch it. Go. <laughs> All right, Pudge, I think we're done. Um, do you wanna say thank you to our friends at Mars Hydro? for the new tent and light. Um, do you wanna say thank you for everyone who subscribed so far and for everybody who continues to watch our videos? Before you go, can we do one last high five? Okay, high five. Yay, bye.